Beloved, we wish you a very happy Easter on this beautiful day in Colorado Springs. We come to you live. We're praying for your prayers for us today because we've had some technical difficulties. <laughs> and uh, I've never in my life been so conscious of Satan's attempt to block the truth of the internet. You know, he doesn't like for us to share the fact that Jesus came in fulfillment of God's promise from the very beginning of the book we call the Bible. In the book of beginnings, in the book of Genesis, he makes it clear that one day the seed of woman would bruise the serpent's head. And he said, thou shalt bruise his heel, which he did. Now we come here after this Holy Week. Many have been in services every day with the message from the Word of God. I saw Governor Huckabee, former <clears throat> governor of the state of Arkansas, excuse me. And he was sharing on Fox News an Easter message, a challenge to us. I also heard that Kathy Lee Gifford had a new book, The Jesus I Know. And I thought, what a wonderful title. The Jesus I Know was the one born in a manger in Bethlehem. And the angels announced his birth. It says a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying unto you this day, this very day is born a savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now that statement right there, I could spend a week on. Christ is messianic title. The Messiah, the Messiah would come. And he would take away the sin of the world. Call his name Jesus because he would save his people from their sin. The marvelous, matchless, overflowing love of Jesus. When he knelt in the garden, you remember that night? He took his disciples there. They fell asleep. Jesus, an hour or so later, came from his place in the garden where he had knelt and found him asleep. And he said, could you not watch with me one hour? And I'm sure he was a little, uh, if I might say so, taken back that those he had chosen didn't fully understand what he was experiencing in that hour of trial. And how he had prayed with drops of blood, sweating drops of blood from his brow, where soon the crown of thorns would pierce that same precious head. With his hands folded in a picture, Solomon's picture of Christ praying in the garden, some of you probably have it at home, or maybe in a Bible that you bought some years ago that had pictures where he's praying. I don't know how many times I looked at that picture as a boy growing up that my mother had hanging on the wall, that Jesus praying in the garden. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not as I would have it but thy will be done. He was willing to drink the cup. And because he went through all that suffering, because he was willing to lay down his life that we might have life, we have this Holy Week celebration 
among all true believers to rejoice on this Easter morning that when the women came, remember, as Matthew recorded in the closing words of his gospel, And they looked in the, in the tomb. The stone was rolled away. And they said, he's not here. They've taken my Lord. And the angel, they thought, said, why seek ye the living among the dead? You see, he was alive. He had already come out of that tomb. He appeared under his apostles in the upper room. He came through the door, the door being shut, and they thought they'd seen a ghost. They couldn't believe it. And he said, if you think I'm not real, come and feel my hands. Look at my feet where the nails pierced it. The evidence is clear. There's no question it was the master. What a wonderful transformation. Passing from death as they placed him in that tomb to life anew on that resurrection morning on the third day he said I'll rise again and he did and so we're here to celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ over the power of sin that put him on that cross and the power of death that delivered him from death to life the morning he left that tomb. The scripture tells us that he was seen a little later by 500 at least who witnessed the glorious risen Christ in all of his glory. And before he was caught back up in the spirit to the Father. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For if it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there ye may be also. And he said, you know where I'm going. And poor Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And they didn't understand. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me, through me, literally, through me. Because he says in another place in John that he's the door of the sheep. He's the door where the sheep enter in through him. And he's the life because he rose from the dead and gives to all of those who believe in him for victory over sin, for victory over death. That's what we believe in him to do for us. When we take him as our Lord and our Savior by laying down our lives so we can receive his life in us. I'm so glad for the day that I realized all that. I would heard it in Sunday school as a little boy before I could read the scriptures. And I said this uh, a few days ago that the marvelous thing about it, I saw it all fulfilled in my own life. How when I prayed for Jesus to come into my heart, I had a peace and a joy. I wasn't afraid at night when I would pray. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray thee, Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray thee, Lord, my soul to take. And boy, I had joy and peace, and I knew that something had happened to me. Now, being a boy eight years of age, I didn't understand all the mystery of godliness that, that Paul talks about, as I've repeatedly said in recent Sundays. There was no doubt in my mind that I was a Christian. And I wasn't afraid of anything anymore. As far as dying, I would go to be with the Lord. And you know, Paul tells us, the apostle Paul, that to die is gain. He said, for me to live is Christ living. 
See, Christ living in me and to die is gain. He said, I have a desire to depart and be with the Lord, but I need to remain here for you. He said, it's more necessary that I stay here to help you along the way to understand what's happened in your life. And you know, every time I celebrate Easter, I think about that marvelous, endless, eternal, forever and forever that I'm going to spend with my dear wife, who just recently, a few months back, passed away before I came in to live here at Sunrise Senior Living. And I've told you, I didn't come here to retire or die. I came here to keep on going and living victoriously. I could sing that song every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Jesus saves and keeps me, and he's the one I'm living for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Do you have that peace today? I'm speaking to all of you who are listening to this message. I will be listening in the hours to come as it's downloaded from this place over the internet on Google and Facebook Messenger, and especially on YouTube, where our dear friend Daniel, Daniel Mikas, is downloading this message right now from this little room in the activity room that we use as a chapel on Sunday morning. You know, uh, senior living should be a happy time for all of us. If every senior within this place were to pass away today, would they pass on? to eternal life that Jesus purchased with his own blood. We celebrated last Sunday. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. And I want you to know, my friend, there's an old hymn that says, whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Wash me and make me whiter than snow. Lord, I want to be whole. You know, I'm not going to really be whole till my body, soul, and spirit are completely in the very presence of God. To when we're transformed into his likeness once and for all. There's another song that said, once and for all, oh brother, believe it. Once and for all, oh sinner, receive it. Christ has redeemed us once for all. You know, salvation doesn't begin when we die. It begins the day we're born again. You see, I was born again into new life. Now, Paul mentioned this in Ephesians. And I hope Danny's making some notes. We finally found several verses that I want you to read after the service. And you can confirm everything I've said in the scripture. I'm sorry we didn't have it ready. You know, the devil doesn't want you to read God's word because I challenged you from the day I started preaching teaching in this place to know that searching the scripture the more you look the more you listen to God speak the more you know what he's talking about the more sense it makes that in the beginning God created in the New Testament God recreates and he says to the Ephesians, you have he quickened 
who were dead. You see, we were dead spiritually because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. Did you know we've been working for wages ever since we became aware and accountable to God, what we call the age of accountability, that we had to give an account to God. And the Bible says we'll give an account for every idle word. That what we've said in secret will be shouted from the housetops. Boy, there's a lot of things. I'm glad my sins under the blood. I don't want my mother and dad in heaven to be reminded. And I, I think that I can forget about worrying about that anymore because I've read in God's word that he's put our sin behind his back. He can't see them. He cast them into the depth of the sea. He said, I'll remember them against you no more. For all things are passed away. And all things have become new. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now I could go on, but I must hurry. You know, the one outstanding thing on Easter is not only what the Lord has already done and his victory over sin and death, but when he came out of that tomb, you know, the women who came to the tomb didn't recognize him. They thought it, his body had been taken away because the linen clothes in which he was wrapped were all folded at the foot of the slab that he was laid on in that tomb. And I mentioned the Shroud of Turin that many think was the very clothing that Jesus had been wrapped in before he was entered, uh, before he was uh, shut up in the tomb by the stone rolled there. Well, I'm not going to find out till I get to heaven for sure about that. But there's a lot of evidence that archaeologists have to support that. They've taken x ray pictures. And there's a body that was once in that shroud. And we believe that they believe that it was Jesus. And then he literally came through that shroud, just like he did that door that was shut when he walked through the door being shut from the inside, which means they were startled because they saw this figure that they didn't recognize because of all that he had suffered. He didn't look like himself, but there was something about him. He was aglow with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And they were led to believe in the days to come that the Holy Spirit had come back to what Jesus said, if I let go away, I'll receive you unto myself. That that literally happened in a way that we can't understand. That all things were made new. You know, when Lazarus came out of the tomb, the brother of Mary and Martha, where Jesus spent a lot of his time. I mentioned this last week. They said, Master, if you'd been here, our brother wouldn't have died. But you see, it's appointed unto all men, good verse, wants to die, and after that, the judgment. You know that verse? Look it up. It's appointed unto all men. That means women, all people. All created beings created in the image of God. 
those whom God created. He wanted fellowship, friendship. He wanted somebody to love him and he wanted some others to love, if you please. And so it's a relationship of love because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave the dearest thing he had, his only son. Like Abraham. Now we've mentioned all this as we've searched the scriptures together. I hope it comes together on this Easter Sunday. Because only as we look back at the book of beginnings, only as we see God as creator and sustainer and victor, with all power and all authority, he said, given unto him. The one who never changes has said his word, not one jot or tittle shall pass away until all has been fulfilled. Now, I want you to think about that. That's such a thrilling thought. Boy, oh boy. God, 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 God. Yes, my sins are gone. Oh, man. Now my soul is free, and in my heart a song buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. I shall live eternally. Praise God. My sins are gone, 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 gone. By the way, on this day of new beginnings, I got my new teeth. I can sing again. I don't lisp anymore. <laughs> and I couldn't wait for that dentist to come Friday. On Good Friday, he pulled two teeth and put in four on my upper partial. And I wag him today, so I got to get used to them again. Feels different in my mouth today. But I said, Doc, I didn't feel the thing you did. I said, you are one painless dentist. And he looked at me and he said, well, I've been told that before. I said, well, you're being told again. And I said, I could recommend you. And I thought, you know, that's what Jesus did. He took away the pain of my sin. And I could sing this song. I heard an old, old story. Our Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. About the angels who were singing the old redemption story. And I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I do it. And all my love is due him. Are you listening? And some sweet day I'll sing up there this song of victory. 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 You know the devil's waging war all over this world? Sin and wickedness in high places. Wars and rumors of wars. The wickedness, the evil in our world is all the result of Satan's control and Satan's power. The Bible teaches us that in a spiritual sense, he's God of this world. 
But you know what the Bible says? One day, he's going to put down every opposing power and make every enemy, including Putin, his footstool. And that was a way of conquering king in the time of our Lord showed victory after a battle with the enemy. When little Goliath was chosen by Almighty God to be the victim of the pebble that little David with a slingshot would kill with one stone in the right spot. And David, appointed and anointed of God, said, the God who gave me victory over the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will give me victory over this Philistine giant. I want you to know that we're celebrating a day of victory today. I heard the Pope's message this morning at three o'clock. That's what time the sun came up in Italy today in the Vatican City. And I saw people gathered by the tens of thousands. That place was packed. Mothers carried their babies in their arms to be blessed, to have an Easter blessing from the Pope himself. Now, friends, whatever we think, we have to accept the fact that at least they're celebrating the right person. They're not celebrating some wicked, dominating force or power or person that has had to kill innocent people like Putin has and continues to shell those hospitals and the train stations and the, all the places where people are gathered for safety, he's pointing his missiles right there. And now he's threatening to use atomic missiles. If the nation in the NATO continues to support the defense of Ukraine. Now, I don't know if you've heard all that news or not, but he's rattling his sabers again. And I wanted to say to him, let me tell you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the majestic, marvelous, mysterious I am is going to put you down, brother. You're going to regret the day you were ever born. Because the Bible said so. And the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That's the word of God. And lest we forget in America, we need to do what Billy Graham's son said yesterday and what the pastor of First Baptist Church, Dallas, Jeffries on Fox News challenged people to have victory and joy in their heart at this Easter season. I want to say amen, brother. I want to shake your hand when I get to heaven. I want to thank you for being so conservative in your theology and in your very countenance I could see up today. A little man he is, Jeffries. He's not a big strong, handsome looking man. But he has the sweetest spirit you ever want to meet. And he has continually, during the, the uh, term of our President Trump, and I'm not speaking for any political figure or anybody, except to say that he was invited many times to come to Washington, D.C. And he gave advice and prayed for our president. Now, how many do you know do that? How many pastors had that much courage and believed the Bible enough 
to pray for the man in power over us like the scripture tells us to do. I still pray for our president, the one we have now. I pray that somehow, some way, God can get through to him. What we need to do as a nation. I wish he would call us all to prayer and say everybody in America get on their knees and call on the God of Daniel and the God of Abraham. And I've preached about all those. I've tried to set this thing up for Easter Sunday in my own mind and say, listen, brother, the world may not receive him, but those to as many as receive him, the scripture said, he gave life evermore. The same life that God Almighty himself scripturally and spiritually speaking, speaks about all through this book we call the Bible. There's just one central figure that stands out. It's Jesus who became man and dwelt among us to reveal to us the very character and the love of Almighty God, his Father. The father he prayed to in the garden. The father he spoke to when he said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It is finished. It is finished. The seven last words of Jesus on that cross. And he dropped his head and gave up his spirit. Now, friend, if you're not familiar with all those verses, I want you to start this very day reading your Bible all the way through. But before you do that, read Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And I'll promise you that it'll be a revelation. Galatians 2.20 says this. Chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live in the flesh by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Do you know that faith is a fruit of his Holy Spirit? Do you know that without faith, it's impossible to please God? Hebrews 11, 6. For all who come to God, he says, must believe that he is, that he's alive and well. And he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, it's good to be able to say seek. <laughs> I don't have to say, Lord, I need my front teeth fixed. I bet I, I haven't tried to whistle yet, but I'm going to try that. And you know what I'm going to whistle? Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. That's my message. That's my title. And that's the lesson. That's the word of God. Don't look for the dead among the living. Jesus isn't dead. Don't go to the empty tomb and expect to find him there. Now, Mohammed, all the others, yet yeah. I'm sorry to say, the only one that ever <laughs> prophesied his own death and life and resurrection was Jesus. And the proof was, he said, come and touch me. Feel the prince in my hands. 
Are you weary and worn from your toil and strife? Place your hand in the nail scarred hand. And the chorus goes, place your hand in the nail scarred hand. Place your hand in the nail scarred hand. He will keep to the end. He's your dearest friend. Place your hand in the nail scarred hand. And I think of all the wonderful verses in that song. We used to sing it often where my dad was pastor. Before I was ever saved, my daddy let me lead the music. And I, a lot of things I sang I didn't know about. And one day I came to understand then. But the one song that my dad always loved for an invitation, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portal, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling. Oh, sinner, come home. The last verse. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Pleading to you and to me. Oh, dear friend, our time goes so quickly. I know, I guess I enjoy preaching as, as much as anything I've ever done in my life. I've never been sorry. I needed God's call. I've never been sorry. I gave him my all, my walk with the master. Grow sweeter each day. I've never been sorry. One step of the way. Father, we come today thanking you for the victory in Jesus. Lord, we cannot begin to say all that we wanted to today. What a matchless, marvelous, mysterious day Easter is. We have Easter eggs from where the fertilized egg, like, like Mary, supernaturally. This, this, the Lord said unto her, that was just conceived in the, the angels then, is of the Holy Spirit. And he <clears throat> he told Joseph, don't be don't be quick to put her away because you're not the father of that baby. You've kept her pure, but the Holy Spirit has brought you life. Why do we celebrate that? Why do we talk about the beautiful flowers, everything new. Why we want new clothes to wear to church, representing the new beginning for those who know the Jesus I know. You know, uh, he makes all things new. He'll do it for you. 
Give him your life today. Invite him to come into your heart, to cleanse your heart, and change your heart, and control your heart. Those three things will happen. He'll cleanse you by his blood. He'll come into you by the Holy Spirit's power. He'll then dwell you and enable you as he enables me to understand his word, to share it with other people, to tell people about that great adventure that you've had today, that you started walking with Jesus again. Like Adam and Eve before the fall, in the cool of the day, in that beautiful garden one day, in the garden of heaven, <laughs> we'll be restored to that place once more. And we'll rejoice forever and ever and praise him, the lamb that was worthy to be slain as a sacrifice in our place where we deserve to die. He conquered death and came out of that too. He's the only one I know that could lay down his life and literally die and bring himself back to life. Now that's a mystery and that's a marvel. And that's a good place to stop. I hope I'm alive next Easter. If the Lord tarries and lets me live here, I'm going to preach the same old sermon in a different way. I could go to a lot of passages and I could say, He's not here, He's risen. Don't be looking around here among the dead folks because He's not here. He's not here. Why do we get up and watch the sunrise? Because the scripture says the same women that knelt at his feet at the cross were the last to leave in there where he suffered and bled and died. And they were the first to go look for him on that Easter morning. I want to tell you, women today have a great opportunity to rejoice because women have more voice today than they've ever had in our nation. <coughs> I rejoice in that, and I want to say more about that. But I praise the Lord for his power to give us victory every day. Living in victory. That's the title, Danny. Living in victory on Easter Sunday. I hope you'll tune in next week. Danny, I hope you'll be here. I hope I'll be here. I'd like to just die preaching and Lord, take me up. I had a lady tell me this morning on the elevator said, it would be a good day to go home, wouldn't it, Pastor? You know what she meant? I know what she meant. She said, I'm ready. She said, I hope all those I've been talking to here are ready. Bless your heart. 